Hi, my name is Prashant. I'm an AI engineer at Kuzu, a graph database startup from Canada, and I'm based in Toronto, Canada. I'm going to be starting with a brief background of uh, where I'm coming from. So I have a background in data science and NLP, and I've worked on various open source projects using tools like Spacey, PySpark, Jon Snow Labs lemmatization framework, in fact, uh, which is an extension to PySpark. So I'm really happy to be speaking at the NLP Summit, and thanks a lot to the organizers for having me on here. Uh, and NLP is something that's really close to my heart, and I've been thinking about these topics from way before the days of LLMs. So in my current role as an AI engineer at Kuzu, I'm focusing as uh, an open source developer relations advocate and building out use cases for graphs and graph databases in the modern AI stack. I first began working with graphs in 2018, and I've since gone deep into that world. And I find that the world of knowledge graphs has a great synergy with the field of NLP. Uh, and specifically from the perspective of information extraction. And I realize there's a lot of folks here with deep experience in NLP who are watching this talk. So I wanted to focus today on deconstructing the idea of graph rag. And many of you may have heard, graph rag has become quite a buzz term in the tech industry lately, mainly because of the role of graphs in grounding LLMs with domain specific facts. So what I want to go through today is the core components of what compose a graph rag system. And we'll discuss some takeaways of uh, what constitutes a system like GraphRag and what developers can do in uh, the space, uh, especially developers who come from an NLP background who want to build and use these systems. So let's get started. So I'll start by giving a brief overview about the terms GraphRag and RAG itself. Now, Retrieval Augmented Generation, or RAG, is a suite of tools and frameworks that combines the strengths of traditional information retrieval systems, such as databases, with the capabilities of generative large language models, or LLMs. Now, GraphRag can be viewed as a type of RAG system that enhances the traditional retrieval augmented generation process uh, by integrating knowledge graphs. And it accomplishes this by leveraging the structured nature of graphs, which organizes the entities and the relationships in your data, alongside semantic search via embedding models. Now, you may know about the uh, graph space rag term that is in the title of this slide, um, but it's also known by other names, uh, such as graph enhanced rag, KG rag, or graph rag without the space. And that's why I want to cover some of these ideas in the talk in terms of explaining that these are all essentially the same system, but it's important to know what forms these systems, what the components of these systems are. Uh, the term graph rag was first introduced and became more used uh, in the end of 2023. And as you may have seen, uh, it's been picking up a lot of momentum in the year 2024. And I actually wrote about this uh, in an article with Ben Lorica in the Gradient Flow newsletter, uh, which you can read in more detail and a link to in this slide. So let's begin with a bit of history. Now, in the early days, in the primary sources uh, that document the term rag, uh, we can look at these two papers, the first one by Google and another one by Facebook AI Research. The, the latter paper was titled Retrieval Augmented Generation for Knowledge-Intensive NLP Tasks. And this paper can be th thought of as the one that coined the term RAG, uh, following which it became you know, mainstream in the usage in, in this space. And the early primary source for graph RAG uh, can be traced back to around September 2023, uh, by the folks at Nebula Graph, which is a graph database company. And they published a blog post in which they discussed the, their industry first graph rag solution. The, the term graph rag was first, you could say, described in that blog post. So let's go into some of the high level components of what uh, generally is referred to as graph rag. So the first component that we'll talk about is, you could say, the indexing component. And the key point here to make is that the indexing component in incorporates both the graph database and the vector database side of things. But the, the main steps involved here are things like acquiring the data, the data acquisition stage, uh, how you chunk the data and, and the text in the data, uh, the embedding stage and loading the data into either the vector or the graph database, the knowledge graph construction phase in which data is, is extracted uh, as a graph and then loaded into a graph database and so on. And I'll cover this in more detail in an upcoming slide. The second component of a graph rag system is, you could say, the serving component. And this is where you understand the user's query intent. You perform vector similarity search via query embeddings. You 
perform graph retrieval via text to cipher or similar pipelines, and then apply a combined context phase or re-ranking phase downstream of this. And finally, the response is generated by an LLM using this retrieved context. So, so we go into some of the finer details of either of these systems in the next two slides. So from an indexing perspective, um, you, the idea here is that you want to start by acquiring data from various sources, including databases, APIs, and file systems. And these sources could be either structured or unstructured, as shown here on the left side of the slide. Then the next step is to perform text chunking and prepare it for analysis and ingest it into a vector database. And um, the, the way it's ingested into the vector database is you embed the data into a suitable format and load it into the database for efficient retrieval. The knowledge graph construction phase shown in the uh, upper half of this diagram, uh, it, it could be from either structured or unstructured sources. And NLP parsing plays an important role when you're extracting data from unstructured sources in this stage. So um, you can look at that here in the middle of this, this diagram. Um, the NLP parsing stage is then followed by the named entity recognition stage and the relationship extraction stage, following which you, can, you have a graph that you can construct. And the next step after this is entity linking, where you actually bridge the, the gap between the structured data uh, extracted as, uh, as well as the uh, entities extracted from named entity recognition. And I think the, the most important thing I want to highlight here is there's always a data quality assurance stage where you perform things like entity resolution, which is shown in the top part of this diagram. And entity resolution is a really, really important step, which I'll also go into in an upcoming slide. But in a nutshell, this is the, the key stage uh, in the initial stage of building GraphRag, which is the indexing component. The, the next component uh, that's coming in is the serving component. And this is downstream of obviously the construction phase. The, the idea behind serving is this is happening as on an online system where a user has access to the system and the user provides a prompt or uh, a query in natural language. This query is then prompt, used to prompt uh, either a vector database or a graph database. And we're showing each of these stages here. The prompt is sent as a query uh, in the graph database's query language in the upper half of this figure. And in the bottom half, we are actually converting the prompt into an embedding vector and performing vector similarity search from a vector database. So as you can see, a typical graph rag system is leveraging both a graph database and a vector database in, in some combination. And the, the key strength of the graph database here, as you can see, is the stage downstream of it where you can leverage graph analytics and machine learning on the graph to compute metrics between entities and, and their relationships and write that back to the graph and use that to inform the retrieval process. The combination of the graph database retrieval and the vector retrieval can then be sent to a re-ranking pipeline. And uh, this is used to actually generate the most contextually relevant uh, output that the LLM can use to generate a response. And it's worth noting here that the LLM can also act as an agent, leveraging external tools to enhance its capabilities and provide more comprehensive and accurate responses. So a lot of complexity can be added into the system uh, depending on whether you want to use agents or you know, function calling and things like that. So it's worth asking the question, how is graph rag better than any conventional rag or vector only rag? And the main idea here is the uh, fact that the graphs in information retrieval are not a new concept. In fact, graphs have been used in information retrieval from the early days of recommendation, recommender systems. And uh, an example of that would be those used by LinkedIn and Google and so on. Uh, the way graphs add value to RAG is by providing factual information from the connected entities. And they do this in combination with vector similarity search from a vector database, uh, which provides valuable context to the LLM during response generation. Uh, in an insightful article from earlier this year, Chia from whyhow.ai describes how graphs can offer value in different stages of the RAG pipeline. And it's important here to realize that it's not one particular architecture of graph RAG that defines what graph RAG is. There are many different kinds of ways to implement graph RAG, and the graph can actually be injected at various stages in the pipeline. That's the key takeaway from this, this article here. So it's definitely worth going deeper and reading more about this. And another report by uh, Louis Guitton uh, earlier this year, titled Graphs and Language, 
uh, he describes how rag is an umbrella term and it helps to distinguish between vector rag and graph rag in a way that Nebula Graph introduced in their blog post in 2023. And Louis also goes on to describe the term hybrid rag in this article, which is an important term to understand. Um, and the idea here is that hybrid rag is a system that combines the results from vector rag and graph rag and potentially other systems like structured databases or relational databases. Before we go into understanding how to build graph rag systems, we must first convince ourselves that graphs measurably enhance rag. And it's been a long time coming, but the literature is now slowly emerging that uncovers some of these findings. Uh, in a paper by LinkedIn Corporation earlier this summer, it was titled Retrieval Augmented Generation with Knowledge Graphs. Um, the idea here is that we can see certain retrieval metrics are showing a marked improvement compared to vector-only retrieval. So in this study, uh, it was a customer service question answering system where a knowledge graph was constructed from historical customer support issue tickets. And each ticket was parsed into a tree representation to preserve its internal structure. And the tickets were then linked based on their con relational context, such as similarities and so on. And then embeddings were generated for each of the nodes in the knowledge graph to enable semantic search and retrieval. And as you can see, the uh, numbers show that there was a sizable improvement in metrics like mean reciprocal rank and the resolution time also reduced um, based on uh, including the knowledge graph in, as part of the system. So this paper uh, came out earlier this year and was one of the first that actually showed a real world application in which graphs enhance drag. And another very interesting paper that came out uh, as recently as August 2024 is the hybrid drag paper by the folks at BlackRock and NVIDIA. And the term hybrid drag is not to be confused with hybrid search, uh, but it's been catching on based on some of the earlier blogs mentioned in this uh, talk. And uh, in this paper, the, the main idea is that it's on the financial domain and they demonstrate how combining vector rag and graph rag in a system that they term hybrid rag shows good overall performance compared to using only vector rag or graph rag alone. And it's definitely worth reading this paper in much more detail. Uh, they apply a sophisticated uh, two-stage graph construction process uh, that uses LLMs in both stages. Uh, the first stage is for data cleaning and pre-processing. And the second stage is for using the LLM to create the knowledge graph triplets with the metadata. And the evaluation here is actually really interesting as well, where um, they, they showcase that the overall performance of the system, uh, the hybrid rag system is actually um, equal to or better than vector only rag. And there, there are cases where the vector rag system performs better than the graph rag and vice versa, but using them in combination with one another is where the real strengths are. So I'll, I'll start by listing some of the bigger picture takeaways from a graph rag perspective. So teams that are using drag in production, uh, they commonly report issues with recall. And this is mainly because similarity metrics are fuzzy and shallow mechanisms. Now graphs provide substantially more sophisticated retrieval patterns than semantic search, mainly through multi-hop traversals, uh, graph analytics, machine learning, and, and many other methods like this to leverage the inherent structure in the data. And although graph drag systems of the current stage, the, the ones that we have today, are still firmly in the realm of statistical AI models like LLMs. With more advanced graphs construction and quality assurance techniques, we can likely build truly hybrid AI systems where we use a combination of symbolic plus statistical AI to power the retrieval systems of the future. And this is actually a very interesting field that could potentially evolve based on the way uh, this uh, innovation is happening nowadays. And um, one of the significant bottlenecks in implementing GraphRag, we must say, remains graph construction. And this slide focuses specifically on the importance of quality in the graph. Now, most GraphRag implementations use LLM-based methods. And maintaining quality of the graph is paramount to the performance in retrieval, as many people who have worked on the drag would know, um, because this gen directly affects the outcome of the generator process in the LLM. And entity resolution is a very key step, and it's often necessary in when you're constructing graphs using a combination of structured and unstructured data. And as an example here, uh, you can see that you have an entity in the middle that needs to be matched with other entities, and, and you need to have a very sophisticated pipeline for entity resolution when constructing a knowledge graph uh, to ensure that 
you don't have duplicate representations that can corrupt the context for the retrieval and the generation. And from an NLP perspective, I think this is important to uh, list some takeaways as well. So people who've come from an NLP background uh, may be familiar with some of the below terms, and they're all relevant for knowledge graph construction. Uh, named entity recognition, where uh, it provides labels for token spans, and essentially it is doing parsing from unstructured data. So the idea of named NER is you're providing a label for a span of tokens. Uh, an extension to this is relationship extraction, where you in infer semantic relationships uh, labeled edges between co-occurring entities or named entities. Uh, entity resolution, which was just described, where you disambiguate consistent entities across data sets, but this is from structured data, where you already have data that is structured in some form and you run an entity resolution algorithm, uh, which is some uh, kind of machine learning method. And finally, entity linking, where you bridge uh, structured the data that is using entity resolution and unstructured data or named entity recognition, uh, you bridge these two together in a knowledge graph. So a combination of all of these skills and uh, tools and frameworks can actually help people from an NLP background uh, apply their knowledge and domain expertise to help build graph rag systems. And I'd also like to highlight the importance of databases and their role in information retrieval systems. Uh, the, the, there are many, many kinds of databases, and uh, there are in, in recent times there have been a new class of databases uh, which are embedded. So um, I, I'm listing three names here: DuckDB, Kuzu, which uh, is the company I work for, and LunchDB. And each of these three databases, they they are embeddable. They are highly interoperable with the data ecosystem, um, and the Arrow format, which is a columnar data format that is uh, highly scalable. So. Um, the key idea here is that modern systems that are uh, scaling uh, both data engineering pipelines as well as uh, the, the downstream retrieval portion of the pipeline uh, rely on tools that can actually scale to meet the needs of these applications. And embeddability is a big asset in these situations. So I highly recommend uh, checking out each of these tools and experimenting with them for your applications alongside your other data systems. So I'll end with some high level takeaways. Uh, to build a production worthy graph rag system, it's important to understand the constituent parts. Graph rag is not a monolithic entity. It's a combination of various tools and systems that help you retrieve from a graph. But even then a graph rag system is a subset of drag and it's important to view it that way. Um, it's also important to understand that um, using monolithic libraries that abstract away important details can take away some of the flexibility in the way you tune your system. So sometimes it's it's always it's good to not only understand what parts go into the system, but also build portions of the system yourself and leverage open source tools and frameworks where the situation permits. And you should also be aware of tools that offer a combination of the following, uh, which is performance. Uh, the tool should be fast and efficient and consume as low resources as possible. Uh, versatility and interoperability with the larger data ecosystem and machine learning ecosystem. And of course, permissive licensing so that you can use these tools to build uh, commercial applications that utilize your company's proprietary data. So I, I think I, I won't go too much deeper into GraphRag uh, other than saying that um, I highly recommend checking out both vector stores like LunchDB and graph stores like Kuzu on GitHub. These are the GitHub URLs for these two databases. And because they're open source projects, uh, it's always uh, you know, appreciated when you go there and give them a star. And I'd also like to um, give a shout out to Paco Nathan for his inputs and reference material for a lot of these slides. And there, there's a lot of insightful content that he's putting out there in this space as well. So um, looking forward to maybe discussing more about building GraphRag and utilizing modern uh, embedded databases in these systems. Thank you very much.